Hi guys, Don Rice here, and today I'm, I'm still working on uh, trying to finalize the, the location and the mounting of all the pieces that go up front, and uh, one of the things I've been working on here is, uh, these are the, the two receiver batteries, and they're going to go right in this area here. And there wasn't enough room really in this area, forget about this piece of wood, there wasn't enough room here for the third battery which would be the ignition battery which is why I've mounted it on the inside as I showed you in the previous video. Um, but this is a spare room that's available uh, when those two batteries are mounted in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put a baggie in here and I'm going to fill this up with uh, resin and steel powder uh, so that um, I, I, it'll probably make for, I don't know, a couple of pounds of nose weight. And it's pretty far forward. So, uh, you know, the dummy engine runs right here. It actually, there's a screw that goes into, uh, through the dummy engine into this plate. So that's about as far forward as I can get weight. Um, but I'm going to do it inside a baggie so that the weight is removable and I can shave uh, ounces off of the weight once it's all done and I can screw it in place and um, anyway so I'll be back in a minute okay so just so we know what's going on here this is a piece of balsa this is only here to operate as a dam I've got it CA'd in place and I'll remove it later uh, this is just cut up uh, business cards um, mainly so that the the steel powder and resin in the baggie doesn't end up going into this hole and making it impossible for me to remove the baggie and the lead weight when it's all set tomorrow. Uh, and so I should probably put one right here too. So, um, back in a minute. Okay, so what I'm doing here is this is uh, some resin. U.S. Composites resin. This is the 635, it's their thin epoxy. Uh, I would actually prefer to use West for this because West sets up so much faster. Um, but I don't have enough of it. So um, this is uh, about an ounce and a half. This is steel powder. Why am I using this instead of, I don't know, lead shot? Um, you can use lead shot. but Lead shot, and, and there's no reason not to. Uh, you know, that's a perfectly good thing to use. Um, the problem is that you cannot... I'm going to... I don't know how much I'm putting in. I'm going to put in that much. That's just a guesstimate. The thing is, is that when you use steel powder, what you end up with is something that is very heavy and very dense, um, but it's machinable. And so... I can, when this is a, a hard lump of, uh, you know, front nose weight, eventually, um, I'll be able to drill and tap this and sink screws into it. Uh, you can also chuck this up on, uh, on a lathe or an upright mill if you wanted to and, um, and machine it into shapes if you want. Um, and you cannot do that with, uh, with lead. At least I don't know how to. So, um, this is a little bit runny, so I will add some more steel shot until I have something that's more like peanut butter, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so now we've got something that's pretty thick, and you know, it might be a little thinner than peanut butter, um, but this will be something I can get into the baggie reasonably easy and it should then move throughout the area and make a nice um, shaped piece. That's the goal. Okay, here's a bag. Baggie. Right. So that's going to go in there like that. Okay. In the interest of full disclosure, I will tell you that I've never made uh, a nose weight like this. So, you know, this could all go pear-shaped pretty quick. 
But I'm going to try and you know that. It'll flow in there. Give me something to start with. And uh, okay. Okay, just like that. Part of, part of the thing is I don't really know how much of my little compartment will hold. But I guess we're going to find out as we continue down this path. So, got enough lead in there to, or not lead, but enough weight, steel powder weight in there to hold it all in place. And we'll then just start scooping it in. I think that the closer I get to having this thing be completely full, the better. Because um, it's all I can always machine off some of this weight. If the airplane's a little nose heavy, I need to take some weight off of it. I can remove this big chunk of weight and, uh, and machine some of this weight back off. That's the plan. Not all plans go according to plan. Okay, so that's a little bit of a mess. I think what I'm going to do here, because the zip tie at the top is actually is stiff. It's keeping the bag from conforming the way I would really like it to. There we go. Now I can just force some pressure get this thing to f form take the form of the space that's available that would be really nice at the moment it almost feels you know it's like it's not heavy enough it doesn't really want to fill all of the available space which is interesting be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do here is I'm going to fold over the top so that you know none of this stuff comes out. And I made a little piece here that can go fits in the top like that. All right, and. As I apply pressure downward, I know that the baggie filled with weight is, you know, moving more into the corners and filling more of the available space. And at this point, it brings this down to being just about level. And so I think what I will do is I will put weight on this. There we go. So that is pressing down now on uh, those two pieces of wood, pressing down, and so uh, that will give me the most amount of weight as far forward as possible um, without having to put any more weight in my cowl. So anyway, that's the plan. Okay, so after a couple of hours under the heat lamp, I came back and, and checked it, and it was getting pretty hard already, so uh, that's all good. So it's another been another few hours without running errands and and so now I'm going to remove these uh, little spacers and let's we'll see if this thing will come out or just exactly what is it going to take to get it out so I will 
I'll knock off this piece of balsa, which was only there as a spacer. Okay. So find that. And then uh Some of the bag has been caught under some folds. So, the, oh, there we go. And it popped out. Just like that. While I'm thinking about it, I will do that. For the moment. I don't know if it'll fit both ways. It does fit both ways. Well, what do you know about that? Nice. Alright, so the various things that I had put in here, the accoutrement to keep the steel powder and resin from going places where I didn't want it. These kinds of things can now <clears throat> Be removed. There we go. All right, just like that. All right. So the idea is that I will, I will drill and tap um, something like a 632 bolt here, and over on this side, and uh, and hang on. I'm going to weigh this. I want to see how much weight we've got going on here. Okay. So here we are. <clears throat> what is that? 318 grams. So 280 is 10 ounces. So it's a little more than 11 ounces. Interesting. Something this big, if it was made out of lead, and you know, I mean, a lot of this right here, uh, I want to say 40 grams of this is, oh, okay. So 40 grams of this was, um, all right, 40, 48 grams of this was resin. And so that means uh, 270 grams. So almost 10 ounces of steel powder mixed with about an ounce and a half of resin gives you that particular block of nose weight. All right, well, it's not as heavy as I had hoped but it's still less weight that I will have to find another place to mount. So I'm calling that a win. All right, later.